So privilege access workstations are uh, specific workstations uh, that are configured with uh, hard that are hardened with security. For example, PAWs or privilege access workstations, uh, you administrators access privilege access workstations with non-admin accounts, and also privilege access workstations are uh, you know up fully totally updated. Uh, uh, you know, safe devices which only are used by administrative purposes and physically safe, meaning it will not be taken out of the IT or everywhere that you go because it is protected uh, uh, workstation. So then only accessed by administrators, but also they are access privilege access workstation with non administrative uh, uh, accounts, right? And then they will have. Um, so they then and and also the limited ad, uh, uh, applications are installed in PAWs. So usually Microsoft recommend using privileged access workstations and VPN when administering virtual machines in Azure. So what you want to do is uh, you once you created virtual machines or virtual machine workload on Azure, <clears throat> then you need to create a VPN solution, virtual private network solution. It can be even point to site as well. So previously we discussed. Uh, configuring a uh, network to network or site to site VPN. Same way we can configure point to site VPN by configuring VPN gateway and then configuring uh, certificate based uh, authentication, meaning we generate the certificate and install the certificate on the uh, privilege access work workstation and then configuring it to the uh, you know virtual network gateway. So once you configure virtual network gateway, uh, you can create point to site VPN. Let me show you how can how that can be done. So we configured um, a virtual private network, virtual uh, network gateways. So I think I configured this one here and then you can configure configurations. Right, so this is the basic one and if you go to point to site configuration, what you can do is we can configure point to site wor workstation by configuring address pool and also you need to generate the certificate. You need to install the certificate on the device, right? And then once you install the certificate on the privilege access workstation, you need to enter. Let's say this is my workstation. Let's say privilege. Uh, privilege access workstation and then the public certificate data has to be entered. So once we install the certificate with the private key, public key has to enter here. Once you enter the public key uh, with the address pool, you can download VPN client here. OK, so once you download a VPN client, what will happen is uh, from this particular device, you can create a connection to uh, virtual uh, gateway virtual network gateway and through that associated net associated network can be connected. I hope it is clear, right? So how it works is let me just uh, draw a little bit here because otherwise it will not be very clear for you. Now let's say what I what I explain is now let's say this is your VNet, right? So here we have VNet one. There can be a bunch of uh, subnets, like so. This is subnet one, subnet two, and then a uh, number of devices are connected to this subnet. Now, let's say there are uh, servers that are connected to this subnet as well, and then we create a virtual network gateway, VNet gateway associated with that here, right? Now this is our privilege access workstation PAW. So what we do is we install digital certificate on the privilege access workstation that can be done using uh, PowerShell commands. And then you can you use the public key, right? This public key you will be configuring in the VNet public key. And then you will generate VPN client. And then we install VPN client on the PAW. So once you do that uh, on the VPN client, you can access the VPN. So once the VPN client is installed, uh, if you go to the uh, network network here, it will show you the VPN connection here. So it will show you your VPN connection here. 
just by clicking on you can create the vpn connectivity so the meaning is once you connected your vpn connection will be established here and then from this particular virtual machine sorry uh, workstation or privilege access workstation you can access these vms uh, securely more securely right so i hope is it clear i hope you understand right so at the same time yeah at the same time uh, you can use jump boxes so jump boxes are specific uh, separate uh, virtual machine inst sorry virtual uh, server instances where we it will only authorize access from uh, administrative privilege access workstation right so that is another way of implementing that uh, but there are a number of ways that you can uh, think of a privilege access device strategy right so then uh, especially for the privilege access workstation we can think of different uh, security implementations including a tpa module trusted platform module bitlocker encryption uh, to the uh, the device so then device will be encrypted and then uefi secure boot so we know windows 10 after two, uh, 2017 1703 uh, it started supporting universal extended firmware interface and then you can enable secure boot so then it will safeguard uh, infecting from in, infecting boot sector viruses and then uh, drivers were uh, distributed through windows update especially if you are using windows 10 uh, drivers will be updated through windows 10 virtualization enable uh, windows hello enable dma direct memory access in input output protection system guard modern standby so these are some of the areas that you can increase the security of the privilege access workstations and, and then we are accessing a uh, jump box through privilege access workstation and perform the administrative tasks right so in that way we can make sure our endpoints are properly protected and the next one is if you are working